Hello friends, welcome to Squared Plans, where creative planning and organization comes to life. I'm Stephanie and today we're going to be doing a little DIY planner refresh for the holiday season in my classic happy planner. I'll show you how to make a laminated vellum cover and set up my frame planner with some new seasonal dashboards, sticky dash, and a pocket folder. So let's get to it. The items that I'll be using are some vellum paper, these thermal laminating pouches and a thermal laminator, this cardstock from a couple years ago, a few disc punches, this corner rounder punch, a pair of scissors, a glue stick, a ruler, and that will do it. Okay, so first off, we're gonna talk about the vellum cover. So I gave away this printable for free last year and went ahead and printed it on some vellum, along with pulling a few items from that cardstock pack and some thermal laminating pouches. So the first thing I wanna do is actually back up these one-sided cardstock papers, just so that they'll be front and back when I'm all done. I'm also going to place the vellum approximately where I think I want it to go on these printed sheets, just so I can get the sizing right when I am cutting these down for the cover. So for a classic cover, I like to do it just about a half an inch wider than the size of a classic size paper, which is seven by nine and a quarter. So I'll make these seven and a half by nine and three quarters. So the first thing I'm doing here is cutting it down, but it's a little bit tricky because I have the vellum on eight and a half by 11 paper already and I'm trying to position it, but not cut it down too much because I will be cutting it down once it's laminated as well. So I just got the first side lined up and we'll call that our baseline side. And then once I get these papers all set up, I'll go ahead and resize and cut it to the proper size in the end, which you'll see. So it's a little bit tricky on this one because of the way I wanted it to be positioned just right and nestled in on that cardstock backer. I also took this printable, which is actually set for classic size and printed it a little bit larger. I went ahead and did the setting that says fit to page instead of doing actual size when I printed it and that expanded it to the full size of a letter size sheet. That worked out for me because I wanted to not see the crop marks because I am doing it a little bit larger as a cover versus the way that I built it, which is for a classic size sheet or dashboards for classic size. So I'm basically gonna do the same thing on the back as I did with the front. I'm just gonna butt those two up against each other and then cut them down to size, which is again, seven and a half by nine and three quarters inches. And then I'm gonna glue them together so that it's nice and clean before I laminate them. One of these got a little bit cut off or cut a little bit short of the size. So I went back through and trimmed off any hanging edges perfectly to size. So you wouldn't see any excess paper hanging over. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and laminate these guys since they're pretty much all ready to go now. And because there are two pieces of cardstock put together plus my five mil sheet, I didn't feel the need to double laminate these. I think that it's rigid enough to handle being a cover and especially because the holiday season's kind of short. So this was a perfect weight for a cover with that doubled up cardstock and the five mil sheet. Now for the vellum, that is a very thin sheet, obviously. So in order to beef it up quite a bit, I'm going to double laminate it. And that's the main reason why I didn't want to cut it down all the way at first. 
because it does make it a little bit easier to cut it when I have the lamination already on the sheet. It just gives me a little bit of a cleaner cut and a little bit more freedom to, to make adjustments here based on the size. So knowing that I had that first side kind of lined up allowed me to go back and really get it trimmed down to the size that I wanted it to be before relaminating it that second time. And I just cut right up to the edge for that first lamination so there was no space at the edges of the page. And that's fine, that's actually the best way to do it I think when you are gonna double laminate because then it gets really close to the edge and is still very rigid but gives your second lamination plenty of space to adhere on the edges without being too wide. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these guys down, trimming off the excess laminate. You need to be careful on these, trimming basically enough to where the laminate can stay closed. You'll see a little air gap and then where the lamination is sealed. I left that lamination as is on three sides, but on the fourth side, the side where I'll be punching, I watched another YouTuber and they suggested doing it right up to the edge on the spine side. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it this time. I'll let you guys know how it performs, but I do think that might be a little bit easier for hole punching and maybe give me a little cleaner punch. So I'm hoping that that will work out well. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and use my ruler, which is already pre-labeled with the exact center point for these covers and use that to mark the center mark. Because these are nine and three quarters inches, you have to divide that in half in order to get your center point for the cover. So I've done this many times. I just went ahead and marked it on my ruler so I wouldn't have to think too hard. Works out perfectly each time. So I'll just get the starter punch done on all of the covers first and then use the guide included here in my power disc punch in order to do the rest of the holes. Now my power disc punch is a little bit dull especially in the stem area of the punch so I will end up going back with some scissors and just trimming off the hanging honors if you will the little things that didn't punch quite all the way through. But otherwise, this tool has been just a dream for DIYing things for my Happy Planner. It just is the right size, and I've talked about this before, but the size of the mushroom is just perfect for really getting onto the discs and fitting well. I'm also using this little corner rounder punch. And this one too has been put through the ringer with lots of laminate and heavy materials. So it's also pretty dull and doesn't cut all the way through anymore. Need to sharpen this guy as well. But I got through pretty much everything and I really like how this one turned out. So next let's move on to the dashboards. So what I did is I grabbed some cardstock out of this cardstock pack and then found a free printable online in order to print out just some nice covers for my six tab dividers for the main sections of my planner. And now I'm gonna cut them down. I cut down the sheets from 12 by 12 size down to a letter size and then printed the free printables right there onto the backs of the sheets since they were one-sided. So that worked out really nicely. I'll make these all the front covers and then I have a nice pattern for the back. I went ahead and dropped these in to InDesign, which is where I usually do all of my printables and exported them again with crop marks just because I think it's a little bit easier. But you could easily just kind of measure it out and get an idea of the size before you do yours. I think that the original size of those printables is 8 by 10. So you shouldn't have any problem, you know, cutting them down to 7 by 9 and a quarter if you're using a classic size Happy Planner. And if you're not using a classic size Happy Planner, if you're using like a letter, 
that one would be perfect because I don't think it comes with crop marks, so it would be pretty easy just to just print these straight on and be done with it. So now that I've got those all cut down, I'm just gonna use my Happy Planner Punch to quickly punch through all of these. Okay, now I have them all punched, and next we will put together all of the items I have for my holiday planner and do the refresh. Okay, you guys, so next we're gonna start taking out all of my fall-themed items and replacing it here with these new holiday themed accessories for my planner. So first thing I need to do is take off the cover and replace it. So I like to leave my pin loop on my cover. I DIY'd this pin loop and I really like it, but the glue on the back sometimes get caught up onto the cover instead of sticking to the actual pin loop. So um, I took a moment to clean that out. Went ahead and dropped in the cover we just created and now am moving in this sticky dash. This sticky dash I made last year as part of my holiday refresh then. And it's just a acetate sheet from Planny Thing along with a cardstock backer and some clear photo corners to stick them together. Okay, so next we're gonna move in these new dashboards into my six dividers. So as I'm doing that, I will be removing the ones that are currently there from fall. These were a little bit more robust, I would say, as far as dividers. I was in a bit of a rush on these, but I really do like these free printables and just kind of the clean look of them. So I'm excited to use these for the holiday season. Putting a simple cardstock backer there behind these plastic dividers that I got off of Amazon. I will link those below as well as anything that I can think of that you might be noticing here from the DIY. That way you can look it up and check it out if it's something you're interested in. So like I said, I had all six dividers. I went ahead and put in those dashboards and now I'm gonna drop in the dashboards I made last year as well into my bottom tab area in my reference section. Just replacing out the current dashboards that are there and putting in these newish <laughs> dashboards for the holiday season. And these were all DIY'd as well, so if you wanna see more about those in particular and how I did those, do check out the holiday refresh video from 2022. I will link that below in the description as well as in the cards. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish dropping these guys in to that bottom tab area. That looks good. And then I remembered, oh, my pocket folder. So I'm gonna pull out my fall one. And then I went on a quick hunt for my holiday one, forgetting that I had already moved it in. I did show how to do this one as well. If you like this more laminated sticky dash version, I have a video on that as well. When I DIY'd my holiday planner in 2021, you can check that out. I'll try to link that as well below. I was doing a transformer planner for a little bit there when I moved in my holiday stuff. So I'm going to rearrange a few things here, including the positioning of this holiday section. I'm just going to pull that out real quick. And remember, oh yeah, there's that folder. <laughs> so it's already in there, ready to go. And I'll just go ahead and put back in the other sheet I had with some page flags there. Taking off the back cover now. So we will move in our new cover. And I think that should do it as far as the accessories, but let's go ahead and drop back in that holiday planner section. Since I'm no longer doing the transformer planner, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this to the front of my schedule section. And that should be perfect and get me through the rest of the holiday season. I have a nice red dashboard there just to call my attention to this section and 
I will definitely be making it more of a priority in my top tab kind of routine now that it's in my general planner. And then finally, we'll go ahead and put on these pin loops, just replacing where they are now. Off camera, after I'm all done here, I will add a little bit more double-sided tape to get those stuck down properly. They're pretty good on the end part, but right where the pen holds the loop, that's where it's a little bit light on the glue or on the stickiness. So I'll add some more after this video is over. And I like to have my pen loops on the front and back cover. So we'll just stick those down and those look really good. So let's do a final flip. So first we have this vellum cover, which I'm really loving the vibes. And like I said, I will re-stick down that pen loop. We've got the sticky dash and the cardstock backer. And then we have the printables that I printed on those cardstock backers with the pre-printed side at the back. And I'll just quickly flip through all of those sections, how they look now. I'm liking how this looks. And then we got my holiday section at the beginning of my schedules. Moving back to the last couple tabs, we have my reference section with the older dashboards I made last year. I'll flip through so you guys can get another view of those. Those were all made with free printables as well and some cardstock. Finally, we've got the last dashboard along with my pocket folder and the back cover. So that'll do it friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. Also too, go ahead and leave me a comment if you'd like to get in touch and think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and we'll see you next time. Bye.